Mysteries are Glenn McGill's business. He's a private detective in Oklahoma City. Patience and attention to detail are the virtues of his trade. McGill believes, with the right techniques, that any mystery can be solved, including the whereabouts of the Lost Dutchman Mine. The Lost Dutchman Mine is a different world altogether. It's out of character for us who are in the investigation business to get involved in this sort of thing, far out as you might say. In 1963, a group of Denver attorneys hired McGill to find the mine. With conviction and a spirit of adventure, he took the case. McGill thinks he found the mine in 1966, but not the vein of gold. In the fall of 1976, an amateur photographer documented McGill's 49th expedition into the superstitions. McGill admits spending thousands of dollars, as well as sacrificing family relations and business gains during his 14-year search for the gold. He is confident that he now knows where the gold is and believes the payoff will match the sacrifice. Things come into focus at this very specific spot in the Superstition Mountains. The maps, the legend, the statements, the witnesses, our investigation, the evidence all comes together at one spot, and that's where we're digging. If our estimates are right, and we believe that they are, then the mine itself is composed of a vein of gold that is over 18 miles long. McGill also believes the mine carries a curse that may be influencing his life. It's uh, no doubt uh, taken some tolls upon me and my family and some of my very close friends. Uh, you might even say that it's uh, been responsible for shortening my life to some degree. Uh, I'm not in the best of health today as I was when I first started this investigation. Whether there is magic in Weaver's Needle or not, it will undoubtedly remain the lodestone for new generations of seekers. The Dutchman said he found gold there. If it happened once, it could happen again. Dutchman hunters have never been popular among the Apaches who still regard the superstition mountains as sacred. The environmentalists don't like gold seekers either. They want to preserve the mountain as a wilderness area. The Apaches and the environmentalists have won their case in Congress. In 1984, the superstition mountains will be off limits to treasure hunters and prospectors. Passing a law is one thing, banishing a dream is another. The dream is constantly being revived by stories like the one told by prospector Milt Rose. Uh, I talked to three men who were with the Dutchman when he died and helped to uh, draw the map that he drew. They drew me a map of this thing and put all the names and things on it that was, should be there. And then I went to look for it from there and found it. And there was gold there and I got about $18,000 out of a pocket, which it proved to be, and it didn't last very long. The Lost Dutchman Mine has no relation to the superstitions or to the weaver's needle. It is in the Four Peaks country at about 4,800 feet in a big canyon. My personal feeling about the Lost Dutchman Mine is that there's more gold in my back teeth than there is in this whole range of mountains. And I just don't believe it's here. I've packed them in for 10 years and have yet to pack a ore sample out. Even if you ground up the Superstition Mountains and ran them through a sieve and found not one ounce of gold, there are those who would say you should have dug a foot down deeper and you would have found the real gold. People dream. They hear these stories and they're greedy. They think that God meant them to find this gold and reserved it for them and they're going to go and find it, so they go in there by the thousands. There was over 10,000 people from 1878 to 1891 in the superstitions before the Dutchman died and left his legend. <laughs>